You're listening to The Jam Pry Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is founder and producer of Circus Road Films, Glenn Reynolds. Well, he's a producer. He's founder of <laughs> Circus <laughs> Road Films, and he's also a film producer. Welcome to the show, Glenn. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Lovely having you. I we've our, I guess our paths have crossed um, surreptitiously, I suppose, with uh, several of the people that you've worked with that I've had on the show. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and um, so I, I do want to talk about some of those people and what you do. So let's talk a little bit about Circus Road Films and why you uh, started it. You started it when? In 2006. So what made you decide to start a production company? Yeah, so I, I'd worked for other people for about 10 years in the film business doing international sales, production, distribution, business affairs, acquisition. So I'd done almost everything working for other people. And I wanted to work on, on my own. I wanted to start my own company and I didn't had no money to do it. Um, and it, and looking around at the landscape of people who represented films to sell in the United States, it seemed like something I could do. I had the skill set for, and I felt like I could add a few wrinkles to it that other people weren't, um, maybe providing, um, to true indie filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And um, I just created a website and got after it. And fortunately, I got referrals from the very beginning. And here I am, 17 years later, still uh, doing the same thing. Wow. Wow. That's great. Congratulations. Because I think it's really important to do what you you're love and, and to do it on your own is even better. So I, yeah, I applaud you for that. I feel the same way about my show. It's the same thing, you know, starting doing something that you love and you're passionate about. Absolutely. Uh, and so what's interesting, um, I was very interested in how you have worked with film festivals and getting distribution, because that's always uh, an interesting you know, an interesting topic that I don't think our listeners have ever heard the story about how a uh, film gets distributed and what that process is and what the film festival circuit's all about. So let's touch both of those things, Glenn, because that's mm -hmm. an area of uh, expertise that you work in and, and uh, are successful in. Absolutely. Yeah. So part of my gig is to help people with film festivals and try to advocate to the programmers that I've gotten to know over the years to say, Hey, you've got to watch this film, give it a special look. Um, and the other hat I wear, the bigger hat I wear is trying to get distribution for the filmmakers I work for um, either by presenting the films uh, through a major film festival um, to the buyers or going directly to them without a festival. Um, the reality is that there's only a handful of festivals that make a big difference for, um, a film and that's really Sundance, South by Southwest, Tribeca, Toronto, a couple of others, um, where the buyers actually show up and therefore, you know, they're in the room and they can see the film on the big screen and have the audience affect, you know, how they see the movie. And so for some films, we're trying to get them into those festivals and sell the film that way. Um, other festivals are great to, there's great reasons for playing other festivals. And there's a few hundred great festivals from Santa Barbara to Cinequest, to Dances with Films to Seattle. There's, there's a litany of them. Um, but the buyers don't show up and the buyers, it doesn't really have an effect on the buyers. The buyers don't look and say, oh, you were in the Seattle Film Festival. It must be a good movie. They just don't see it that way. They overwhelmingly they're, they're looking at the quality of the film, who's in the movie, what's the genre, is it marketable? And festivals play is nice, but not, not really that important to them. Um, but sometimes I have clients that just wanna play festivals because there's all sorts of other good reasons to play them besides getting distribution from you know having your film in front of an audience, which is exciting, to meeting other filmmakers, doing Q and A's, meeting future investors, a little publicity for your films. There's all sorts of good reasons to do them. But there's really kind of a stark difference between kind of the big festivals and how you use those to get distribution and how you might use the other festivals. So would it be good for a filmmaker to, 
let's say Santa Barbara, because I, I, this is one of my favorite. Well, I live in Santa Barbara, number one. <laughs> number two, it's been one of my favorite film festivals to attend since 2009. Yeah. yeah. And yes, you're right. I don't think this is not one necessarily for people to come and get their film distributed, but it is a place where they can get a lot of um, word of mouth because it's so well attended and there, and, and it is a very, very popular film festival has because we're, you know, we're, you know, we're in the, you know, the next door neighbor to Hollywood. And, and obviously this is like a suburb of Hollywood because there's so many um, filmmakers and famous actors and actresses. You know, we have Oprah, we have Ellen, we've got Rob Lowe, we've got uh, Jeff Bridges. We have a lot of people who live here and yeah. that gives this film festival, I think a lot more cachet in many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, because of that. And, and so my, I guess the bottom, my question is by going to a film festival such as Santa Barbara, where they're getting some word of mouth, does that help them getting into some of the bigger film festivals such as Toronto and Sundance and et cetera, or do they, does Sundance and Toronto only want movies that haven't been at any other film festivals? Yeah, it's a mix. So for instance, Toronto mostly wants premieres. Um, so it's really playing another festival isn't going to leverage you, you into another festival. Um, Sundance has a few slots for films that were in previous festivals, but where Santa Barbara is in kind of the beginning of the year, it's a long trajectory to play Santa Barbara and then think that that's going to help for Sundance. Typically, if a film plays maybe in the Hamptons or the Austin Film Festival, maybe it's still got a chance at being at Sundance. Um South by Southwest is a little more lenient. They have different kinds of premieres so that you can have a, a worldwide premiere, a U.S. premiere, a Texas premiere. Um, so they they will um, they won't uh, reject you because you're in Santa Barbara. Um, but there's still a prejudice for wanting premieres. So um, it kind of has you know you have to kind of. Um, I quite often have clients where we're like, okay, we got into Cinequest. And it's a great festival, but we haven't heard from South by Southwest yet. What should we do? Right. And usually at that point, I'm calling South by Southwest and saying, hey, we got into Cinequest, and, but we'd so much, much rather be in South by. Can you give us some a hint on, on where, where we stand? And, and they might be able to tell me like, well, you're on the cusp or you're not in. So go to Cinequest, you know, feel free to go to Cinequest. So sometimes I can help you a little helpful with that, too, in terms of trying to figure out what the best festival to play is. So then once once you play a festival and and there are the distributors are there. Talk about that process. You know, that's always fascinating. I mean, I've I had uh, lived in Utah for seven years and for seven years I volunteered for the Sundance Film Festival and then I moved away and then I came back once I started my show. And, mm -hmm. you know, one thing, I mean, I was there when I sat across from Harvey Weinstein, and believe it or not, and Gwyneth Paltrow and Ben Affleck, uh, you know, at, at Zoom Restaurant, which Robert Redford owned, you know, that's the kind sure, of thing. It's sort sure. of fun and watching them all. I mean, literally, I'm right across from them. And, you know, that was the big uh, event to come to Sundance and have Harvey Weinstein see your film, you know, which is, you know, we all know what's happened to Harvey, but he did do a lot of good things for the film industry because he was one of those big champions for independent film when there weren't as many champions for it. So talk about that process, because I know there would be these midnight deals made, you know, at two or three. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very competitive. So everybody thinks kind of, hey, I got into Sundance, you know, now I'm writing my ticket. I'm going to be the next big director in Hollywood. And that happens to some for some people. But the reality is, is that there's another hundred, you know, 99 other films in Sundance, you're going to get five screenings, four or five screenings at various theaters around town at different days. But there's four or five films screened at the same time as yours at other theaters. And so part of my job is to convince the acquisitions people, hey, you should be coming to our film and not go to the other film that's got the bigger. And usually I'm working on the film, the smaller, it's a smaller movie. Um, just where I kind of sit in the world, I'm working on more true indie films and not necessarily the Ben Affleck um, starring in independent film. Right. Um, and um, and so it's still it's still very competitive to get them into the room, even at Sundance. And some films leave Sundance without the deal. It's just it's not, you know, all the press goes to the 30 or 40 films that get 
the big deals, but they're 20, 30 or so that leave without something and maybe they eventually get distribution, but it's a lot, it's not easy even then. Um, it just has the benefit of everybody. It's just been considered a place where great films show. So all the buyers show up and, and do their bidding. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot, it's a, it, the main thing with filmmakers, I'm always trying to remind them is, you know, enjoy this process. You know, all of them are, are usually they're um, really concerned about the sale and worried about people coming to see their movie and all that stuff and forget to have a good time and enjoy the fact that they, you know, are where they are at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, I had a film there years ago um, where we had, you know, several offers from different companies. And so we're meeting in condos um, to negotiate the deal. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always tricky because you're, um, you know, is there another deal, better deal around the corner? So-and-so hasn't seen it yet, but should we go pull the trigger on this deal that's, that, that, that there's a clock on? Um, so it can get, um, it can get nerve wracking, but it, you know, it's a bet better than digging ditches. So it's, <laughs> this is it's a lot of fun. True. Gosh, you know, I have seen so many wonderful films at film festivals that I've never seen, you know, on that get released. I don't know where they go. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know now they're looking for so much material. I guess some of them do go to st directly to streaming also, but I mean, this year at Santa Barbara Film Festival, I mean, there were so many and I I went up to all of them, all the films that I absolutely was deeply in love with and none of them had a, dis a distributor yet. And I said, when you get your distributor, contact me because there's no sense having somebody on my show without a place for people to go see the movie. And yeah. For sure. That's, yeah. And some of these were like, you know, Barbara Koppel had a new uh, documentary at the film festival and uh, oh God, there were so many. And, and some of them had been on my, Barbara Koppel's been on my show before and, and uh, some, some many others too. Nancy Bers Bertsky, I think she, and she's got a good one. Mm -hmm. Midnight Cowboy in New York city. And it's, oh, it's a great documentary and um, you know, it, just other ones too uh, that there, that I saw this year. I mean, one with Rita Marino called the prank. Mm -hmm. Hope it gets distributed. <laughs> it's, and she's so wonderful in this movie. Yeah. It's so different. And that's why I love going to film festivals because you get to see these little gems that you may or not, may not get to see somewhere else, you know, um, so which is unfortunate. And we met your friend, Jay Silverman. I met your friend, Jay Silverman, your friend, my friend, uh, at the Santa Barbara Film Festival oh, yeah. down the street. Yeah, he's he's uh he's a great filmmaker. He's made several films now that uh, uh have gotten distribution and did really well. So it's uh it's a, definitely a success story among all the ones you talk about that like don't quite get distribution. He's really very savvy and um great filmmaker. Yeah, he is. I forgot we we just I don't know, we just started talking on the street and and he told me, and at that point he had off the menu, the the film off. Uh -huh. So I had him on for that and then when he had Saving Paradise I had him back on for that. And I always love interviewing him, but you know, several others uh, that we have, you know, that I've had on the show that you've also worked with. So talk a little bit about that because you found me, you, uh, <laughs> it's a little different story here. Usually I work with publicists and they reach out to me and, you know, and that's how I book my show for people who don't know how I book my show, but every once in a while, somebody will reach out to me, um, you know, via email and you were one of those people and tell me a little bit about what you did. And, and I, when, and I asked you how you found the show. And then you said you gave me a whole big list of people that you worked <laughs> with that I have had on the show before. So tell me a little bit about what that was, you know, why you did reach out to me after you uh, heard about the show or had listened to it. Yeah. Well, I've had some, you know, within the last couple of years, had some really good experiences. I, I'd never been on a podcast until maybe about two years ago. Um, and um I did one, well, maybe like three or four years ago, I did my first one. And then I did Film Courage a couple of years, maybe about a year ago, and a couple of others. Just had a great experience. And um, the other thing that came out of it um, the, was just, uh, I, I really, part of why I, why I like doing this, I like teaching filmmakers about the business because distribution is just something they don't know right. mostly at all. And um, I enjoyed the process of educating them and 
taking them along and and introducing them in, into the business and helping them figure out their path. And um, I found that the, doing the podcast was just a great extension of that. And I got all sorts of great feedback from doing these podcasts uh, um, that people just found it very helpful and that was just a thrill. So, um, and I'd watched, uh, I'd watched yours a couple of times just off of knowing that my filmmakers had been on it. So I just one day thought, okay, hey, I'll, I'll reach out to Jan and see um, if, she, if she'd like to chat. And so here we are. And I'm glad you did because this is, you're right, it's behind the scenes and of uh, of this industry that not many people do understand. So what advice would you give a filmmaker who is looking to get their film distributed? Yeah, so I think, um, I mean, all sorts of things. Um, you know, first of all, I think, you know, I'm always talking to people once they finish their film, right? So leaving ahead screenwriting and producing and all there's all sorts of advice to give about all that stuff but once you have a finished film um i'm always a big advocate of of doing test screenings for um friends colleagues hopefully people in the industry editors other people to get feedback on your edit um see so a lot of people who just rush to you know oh i've created my masterpiece i you know this is this is my vision um, when in reality, you know, the, all the Hollywood, all the studios, they test things and they, and they, they make sure that they're, they're connecting with their audience before they start sharing the film with the world. So, um, I'm a big believer in doing that. Um, and getting feedback from people like me or the industry in terms of like, what's the strategy for getting it out there? Is this a film that could get into a major festival? Am I wasting my time? Is it a film that can go right to distribution and just skip that whole path? Um, is it right for a Santa Barbara festival? Um, there's lots of, you know, there's there's me obviously, but there's other people like me that can kind of advise on that, on that, um, on that strategy. And I think it's good to do that pre-festival. Um, I've seen a lot of people just kind of waste their time applying to, you know, spending 50 to 100 bucks per application. And and running through fifty festivals and not getting into one to discover that hey they've got an interesting movie but it's just not the right thing. There are certain films that just don't work for festivals. Romantic comedies sometimes don't work well for uh, festivals. You know horror films kind of only work for certain kinds of horror films work for festivals but not all do. So it kind of depends on what you have. Some films are right for television and not really right for screens. You know for so there's that too. So. It's good to get that kind of feedback before you just start throwing the film out to festivals and see if you land there. I was just reading an article. I, I don't remember which publication it was, was, but about romantic comedies just don't do well anymore on the screen and the big screen. They're saying, you know, it's like, really? That's tough. Huh. I always like romantic comedies. <laughs> so I was yeah, like, right. You know, and I don't like horror films, but that's the genre that is seems to be incredibly strong right now. Sci fi horror which are not my favorite and you know i get sent a lot of times i i mean i, I get sent a lot um, um horror films and quite honestly i you know I, I have to tell the publicist you know this my audience is not fans of horror films right most of them anyhow because it's an i'll say this is an older audience for my show to be honest and um and i know i know who my audience is and uh, and horror films are not something that they're that interested in. Although I have covered some, a couple that were just intriguing, that were just different. You know, they weren't like the uh, the real horrors, super scary, but just really uniquely different. I did one with Western one that was really interesting. So I did, I have covered some of them, but generally speak, and I've had my audience reach out to me and go, you know what? You made me want to go see this film. So that's <laughs> And that's what my job is, <laughs> you know, to give enough background about the film, the making of the film, so people are interested enough to want to see it. Uh, and I, you know, and that's what this is also this educating the audience about how these movies get, you know, out into the public mainstream, so we can all watch and enjoy them. How do how do filmmakers find you, Glenn? Um, several different ways. I get a lot of referrals from agencies. Um, who handle handle bigger films and they think it's kind of specialized a smaller independent film, I'll get referrals from them 
a lot of films come to me that way. Um, a lot of people find me on the internet talking about the movie and they look up my web website and then find my email address and contact me. So and, and fortunately, you know, I'm um, lucky in that uh, I've done this long enough that most of the films come to me in some way and I can kind of look through the things that, that come my way and pick what I feel like I can work on and, and sell for them. Um, when I first started, I had to do a lot of research. I had to really reach the scour the festivals and kind of do cold calling and and get out there and try to convince people, uh, you know, I could I could work on their film and and do a good job. But um, now now mostly it's from uh, you know they find me on the internet or it's or it's a referral basis. Like so, I mean, I work for a lot of people. You know, like filmmakers is a small community, and so a lot of filmmakers just refer me to other filmmakers as well. Well, that's good. That word of mouth is the best form of advertising. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now. Do you have um do you have something that you specialize in or or and or are there some um genres that you stay away from? Um not 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 really. Um I do really all genres. Um comedies, dramas, horror films, thrillers, documentaries, um action films. Um that being said, the indie community mostly makes dramas, right? That's what that people are more inclined to be making personal stories and they're, you know, things that they really understand and want to express. And documentaries is, tend to be the, the two largest categories. Um, and then horror and thriller probably next. Um, I definitely pass on a lot of horror that I find derivative or just too small. Um, because then there's a, there is a lot of that out there. Um, but then you see a horror film with an interesting twist or an interesting, you know, has more character study to it. And so I, I prefer those, but, um, and that matches my taste as well. I have a very eclectic taste. I like art house films. I mean, I'm, I'm more into art house films and indie films than tent poles or franchises, I'd say though. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you on that too. Um, when you, work with someone what's your what's the process that you go through when you decide that you want to work on this film what, what how does your process go when with working with a filmmaker yeah so based you know, it's either one conversation to where i you know i send them a bunch of information about what i do and how i do it and and my proposed strategy for taking the film out and then if they engage me um, then if we're doing a festival strategy, we start talking about festivals to start and I make my advice, I give them my advice on where I think they should apply. And then I start calling those programmers and then we work towards getting a festival. And then once we have a festival, then I start putting in front of distributors and we kind of work hand in hand all, along the way. And for some filmmakers, I'm, the strategy is, hey, let's go right to buyers. And um, it usually just takes me about five or six weeks to get out to about 25 or 30 distributors. Um, you know that people, and, and some platforms like Netflix and Hulu and Showtime I sell I try to sell to uh, but then I'm also going to companies like Lionsgate and Gravitas and um, a variety of um, all rights companies Good Deed Entertainment freestyle releasing you know there's about like I said about 25 companies I kind of go to with all my films um, to see if I can find the best deal and um yeah, and it kind of, you know, how much I work with, you know, interact with them kind of depends on the client. You have some clients that are like, want to interact a lot and want to call me for advice about everything under the sun and call me two years later and want me to read their next project. And that's great. I'm happy with that. And there's some people that are just like, okay, you did the deal for me. See you later. You know, so there's, there's, you get all types. So it kind of depends on the client a little bit as well. How did you get into producing? I, 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 as I said to you, you said one of your, in, in your um, information you sent me, one of your favorite films was Conversations with Other Women. And I just recently, I, I, you know, ironically, um, at a thrift store and they had a huge, huge display of DVDs and came across Conversations with Other Women. I said, wow, I love Aaron Eckhart and Hela, Helena Bonham Carter. And uh, and it was an early Olivia Wilde film. And I thought, oh, this looks like it would really be interesting. And it, it is, it really is interesting. And then literally like within two weeks, it's when I heard from you and I went, isn't that, isn't that serendipity? That's funny. That's crazy. <laughs> serendipity. I mean, it really is. And I, I did, we, we did watch it and we did enjoy it. It was very interesting, very fascinating uh, a film. So yeah. Yeah, it was funny. I, um, 
so the way I produce, I'm always one of a group of producers. I'm not like the, I'm, I'm never the one on set barking orders and uh, telling the director what to do and that I'm either it's a property that I help develop and then a friend of mine has some money and we cobble it together or a friend of mine has a property and I find an investor and we cobble it together. So I'm usually one of a group of people producing a movie. Um, and so my role is usually developing the property, helping with the casting, um, overseeing production a bit, watching over the edit, making sure it works, and then helping sell the film. Um, conversations with other women in particular um, was with made with a good friend of mine named Ron Berkman, who now makes bigger films. And he, I think it was the fifth film we made together. And um, in that case, I found the financing and the company I worked for at the time did the distribution. And um, and it was, uh, you know, just a great script. Um, we got into Telluride Film Festival, which is a fantastic festival. And um, we were right between, you know, Brokeback Mountain and Good and uh, Capote at the time. So we, were, we yeah. felt like we were in exalted air. And at the time, though, we, you know, we kind of felt like, wow, this is a special film. We really thought Miramax, you know, at the time, Miramax or someone like that would pick it up. But no one of that level, we got offers, but no one bigger. Um, so we ended up, the company I worked for, we all decided internally just to distribute it ourselves. And so we did a theatrical and it did pretty well theatrically. It sold really well overseas. And um, so it was, uh, you know, financially a, a successful film at the end of the day oh glenn i could talk to you more but our time has run out I, I i really fascinating very interesting to hear about the behind the scenes of how movies get out into the public so we can all you know enjoy them so thank you so much it's a pleasure having you on i'll have you back on we can talk about some other films you have coming up that sounds great thank you so much jan you're welcome thank you